Hey everybody, how y'all doing? This is going to be a short little video. And just, this is how I believe cam bearings should be installed. I get good results and it makes a lot of sense. But anyway, first off, depending on the cam bearing that you use, they will come with a chart and you got to compare the numbers and see which one goes in which order. Not in, Front bearings number one, two, three, four, and five, etc. So, okay, you figure out your numbers. Your front bearing usually has the two holes, like this one. I'm gonna find my way one, two. Then, however you do it, get them laid out in the order that you need. And this is the block is upside down. A lot of guys take the simple way out, and they drive them through until they can look through that hole Let's see I guess you can't really see see it's down there well there we go we'll do this they think doing that where you can see the light down there hey the bearing's good my problem is when the blocks right side up the oil comes down right through there down around that bearing down around both sides then to the main well, if your main is working like it's supposed to, the oil pressure, until it put it gets resistance from the main, it's the only time the oil pressure is pushing up. And oil makes a film. So, when the block is upside down, the front and rear, I put in at 4 to 5 o'clock. Imagine, imagine this is 12 when the block's upside down. There's 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. You go four to five, right there for the front main in the rear, number five rear rear uh, cam bearing. And you're going well. The front bearing has two holes. Well, I've looked at the factory the way they did it. They just picked one hole. And uh, what I usually do is, uh, since the front main and the front rod are basically the last to get oil. I just kind of put the bearing in with the two holes up. That way when the oil comes down, it's flooding that front bearing with the oil. And then the other three in the middle, I put over here at the 7 o'clock. Because that's the way the rotation of the cam is. As that oil comes in, it gets pulled down and works around. But the point about going straight down and seeing, I've seen cam bearings have a lot more wear with the setup like that. Buddy's block back there is the same way. And that guy was a professional engine builder and he still took the place. I mean, you drive those in, they're at such an angle. With a flashlight, you can look both ways and you, you can see the inside. Or if you're uncomfortable and you don't think you got it, you take a pick of some kind, stick it in that little hole, and if you can go there and there, and you can fill. Oops. If you fill that through the hole, fill both sides, you know you got that bearing centered. So it's not that hard to do. Um, yeah. Then you just drive them in accordingly. I mean, that's how you do it. And you guys have seen with my motors, that motor, that 383 I got going the other night, is carrying over 75 pounds of oil pressure. My race motors that are out there, they say they hit 100 pounds of oil pressure going down the straightaway. Idle about 65. The only thing I've changed is I make sure those cam brains are not lined up with the mains. So, uh, otherwise, it's just simple drive them in and and here's one little tip too. Wow. Your cam bearing driver, depending on what you're using for a cam bearing driver, is actually broken the force. And stay in here, buddy. Oh no. Stay in there and keep the camera right there. I'll show you guys what I do. This is number five. 4-2, verify it. 
Yep, 4 2. What I'll do with the cambering is I'll line that hole up with one of those. I gotta grab my wrench. Uh, I line that up with the hole. So, see right now that then you kind of look where it is. That's at the 12 o'clock position. Well, if you turn it where the next one is, that's three o'clock. And by the time I'm in the five o'clock position. That usually lines up with the bottom of the cylinders. And then you just get it in there, and you gotta wiggle it in, make sure it's started in there. And then to make sure your bearing's going straight, you gotta make sure that cone's there. And uh, I got the hammer close, so. You know, I'll just do this one and show you guys. I mean, it's so simple to do. And since that's going under the back, and I've done this enough times, I know my cambering driver's got to go deeper. And then I take my flashlight. I can see the back of the groove. Around here, look. A little hard to see. Oops, drop the ridge. That's where you can come in. And do this. You get in there with your pick, and yep, there's that side of the hole coming from the back side, and there's the groove on that side. And I can see from looking right here, I had it dead center. So that's how I how I do my cam bearings. Uh, I lay them out in order, keep them in order, still verify as you go. And uh, that's what you do. So that's how, like I said, I've tore down enough motors <laughs> and uh, seen the motors that come in where they're lined up with the mains always seem like they have lower oil pressures than what the ones I put together do. So, anyway, everybody, thanks for watching. This is just my take on it and my understanding of doing the cane bearing. So, see y'all later. Have a good one.